With us now, Alan Dershowitz is a professor emeritus at Harvard Law School. Professor, welcome to National Report. All right, we've seen mugshots before of other co-defendants. Do you anticipate it being any different for the former president of the United States? Well, sure. His mugshot will be put on a T-shirt, and it'll be the best-selling T-shirt in the history of T-shirts, and he will use it as a campaign poster. So he's going to try to take advantage of every moment uh, of uh, of what's going on there. Look, I'm about to turn 85. I never thought I'd live to see the day when the man running for president against the incumbent is being charged with RICO crimes, uh, m mostly not applicable and mostly baked on, on very, very questionable uh, evidence. It's a very, very sad day for America. The American public has the right to determine uh, who to vote for. Uh, I want to vote against Donald Trump for the third time, and I'm want people who want to vote for him to vote for him. Look, I wrote a whole book about this. It's called Get Trump. This is all part of a Get Trump approach. In the book, I predicted that there would be these four indictments, four Democrats, essentially prosecutors, pushing for a conviction before the election, yeah. even though they know that there'd likely be reversals of the conviction after the election. This is a highly politicized and weaponize use of the criminal justice system for partisan purposes. It's a sad day for America. Professor, I want to ask you two questions wrapped into one, if I can. Um, one, is there a chance that this goes from state court to federal court? That's one. And then two, um, news was made this morning that the, uh, pr the former president uh, pushed off Drew Fendling, uh, defending him, hired a new attorney down in Georgia, uh, Stephen Sato. He's an Atlanta-based, white-collar, um, high-profile case attorney. Why would, uh, why would a choice like that be made day of in terms of switching out attorneys? And then again, back to that question, could this go to a federal court? It could go to a federal court, and that may be one of the reasons for switching attorneys. You need a very sophisticated constitutional lawyer to make the argument, switching it to federal court. Rudy Giuliani's case probably can't be taken to federal court because he wasn't a federal official. But uh, President Trump obviously was, as was Mark Meadows. We know Mark Meadows is going to make that motion. Maybe he's already made it. I suspect that the new lawyer for Donald Trump will be making that motion as well. And if it's denied, we'll be appealing it, and that thereby de delaying the trial. Remember. Uh, these two prosecutors, the one in the District of Columbia and the one here, have tried to push this case faster than any case in the history of complex litigation. Um, in D.C., they want the trial on January 2nd, and a group of former law professors and judges have pushed for this rush to uh, injustice. And in, in, in uh, Georgia, they want the trial within six months. I've been doing this for 60 years. I have never seen a case brought to trial so quickly with so much complexity, particularly in Georgia, where there are 19 defendants, 95-page indictment, hundreds of thousands of documents, this case cannot be brought to trial uh, within six months or four and a half months. Unlikely it can be brought to trial before the election, but that's the push. The goal is get a conviction before the election, and if there's a reversal after the election, well, who cares? Mm. Again, there, there are four separate cases that we're following, and you've got to look at scheduling conflicts for everyone involved. Professor Alan Dershowitz joining us with his analysis. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Thank you.